Hey everybody, I'm here with Sam Jimenez. He's the CEO of Astroport and also Louise Cantrell. She is the executive officer for the WEX Foundation and they're here to give us a little bit of discussion about what they are doing here with Astroport and how they are working with NASA to try to help solve one of the biggest issues that we have and that is landing on the moon. Uh, Sam and Louise, if you would talk a little bit about uh, Astroport and what you are doing with your mission here. Sure, so Astroport is building infrastructure for the moon. That's our main goal. We have to uh, go back to the moon and stay. If we're gonna do that, we need a place to, to land and come and go for the supply chains and all that. And to do that on a consistent basis, you need a safe landing area. And now how do you build a landing port on the moon? How do you build a landing pad? And that's our, that's our research we're doing. And we're using the regolith that's on the moon as the core base building material. So we're doing, it's called in situ resource utilization or ISRU. And so what we're, what we're doing with that, we're taking the raw regolith and we're melting it and turning it into bricks solidifying it so that it can become the pavement for the landing pad that we're constructing, together with the robust and the autonomous robots we're gonna be using to do the construction process. We're a global company. We have uh, offices in Luxembourg and also in, uh, in Adelaide, uh, Australia. Those are two centers of, uh, of, uh, of expertise in uh, civil engineering and, and ISRU resource utilization as well. And it's, this is an, a global endeavor. We have a, a consortium of companies that are, are international. We have uh, Polish companies and we have Australian companies and we have uh, German companies and Luxembourgish, Luxembourgish companies, all part of our team that does this. Now, and our funding comes from NASA uh, through SBIR programs and, uh, and we're in the phase two part of it right now. That's as far as we've gotten. The next phase is the next phase three and the implementation part of it. Astroport uh, uh, is, tr is a workforce development operation here in San Antonio at the port San Antonio, where we're located at. We're, we're, we're trying to make San Antonio a center of excellence for lunar construction. So Louise is our, our STEM education outreach component of our project. We have set up a, a foundation called the WEX Foundation, which Louise is the executive director of. And I'll let Louise talk more about how that works as well. Well, it's a three-year program, and the students are middle school students when they start, and they, they go for um, lessons on Saturdays, two Saturdays a month during the school year, and they have a, a student showcase at the end where they uh, send up a high altitude balloon and uh, sometimes they send up rockets and the payloads are their own instruments that they've devised and built. They are supported by NASA because NASA calls them their junior NASA consultants because they're working on real life problems and they're going to be the workforce that we develop for these jobs of the future that Sam's going to be hiring and that other, other uh, aerospace and aviation and engineering uh, companies are going to want to hire. Well, Sam, thank you again for allowing us to come out here and ask you a bunch of questions. It sounds like uh, quite a uh, momentous uh, challenge that you have coming sure. up. Now, one of the things is, you know, we're focusing on the, the bricks, and we're going to see that in the lab here a little bit about manufacturing those. But, but your plans, at least for what I have seen, are a little bit bigger than that. I mean, it's not just making the bricks and making a landing zone, but you're talking about bringing kind of a hire or logistics behind that to make this happen. So you can talk a little bit about the scope of your program. So, you know, our, um, our end game is actually to, to be the operator of these landing pads. Mm -hmm. So, the, you know, again, the, we believe that the landing pad, the port, is a gateway to the development of any kind of a permanent location. Mm -hmm. when there, whether you're doing mining there, you're doing tourism there, you're doing science research there, the, you need to have a landing spot, right? And those, that's the gateway. We're not just making material development. We're taking the, our approaches from an end-to-end -end systems approach. Everything from the rocket that's used, how do you package that rocket with all the assets, the, the construction assets you need to bring with you, and then how do you stage it? How do you set up the, once you get there and land, you got to stage, you got to put your power system in place, you got to put your communication system in place, and then you start doing your, you know, your, your excavation, your regular distribution, and then your feedstock to the brick bots that we're making. We're making the, making the bricks as well. For people that follow my channel, I do a lot of Giga Texas construction, and I started way back when it was just dirt, and they had mm -hmm. to do a lot of ground preparation. And it's not very different to what 
you're going to face Absolutely. initially. However, they had a lot of established equipment and they're here on the earth. Talk a little bit about that challenge that you're taking on. Sure, so we can't big, bring big heavy, you know, tractors and bulldozers and we have to deal with the ability to do, the, do that kind of traction uh, in a different kind of way, which is what we, we're working here with our, our, our uh, excavator robot okay. that we're developing and that NASA's also been working on as well. So it's going to be a more of a fleet of smaller robots mm -hmm. doing that sort of thing. And we have not just the excavation, we have the drillers, we have uh, sweepers. So it's got to sweep the, the, the debris off the pad right. after it's been, 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 been used. And, uh, and, and all kinds of different uh, swarms of robots are going to be part of that application. Now there's a challenge in all that, and where's all the power for all this mm -hmm. happening, right? And that's, the, that's the, the piece that needs to be really solved and put in place as to where the, where's the power system. Mm -hmm. And we talk talking to other companies that have different various uh, uh, ways of doing power, whether it's going to be nuclear power, solar power, or beam power from orbit mm -hmm. as well. So tell me a little bit about this 3D printer. Yeah, this is a, it's a hang printer. We call it a 3D hang printer. And it, the way it, it allows us to print uh, from uh, large format printing, from meter to meters of size. Uh, as long as we can, uh, we can spread out the, uh, the, the truss system and we can print the whole pad if we wanted to, if we wanted to print a pad with, the, with this filament. Tell me about this truss structure. This would be something so, later on, but you would do yeah, what with so it? We would, so we would be able to, to mount the trusses on, on, on a robot, right? Three little robots and they would have the trusses and that could, they could spread out to whatever, wherever you want to go print something and, and to whatever size you want. So one of the questions that I have has to do with the Artemis program and the schedule that they have for Artemis 3, which is the first landing of humans coming up. Currently, it's at the end of 2026. We'll see if that happens. But before that, SpaceX is on contract to do a demonstration landing on Correct. the moon. Do you play any role in that mission? And if so, what is that? Yes, uh, we do, as a matter of fact. So one of our strategic partners in the construction sequence of the, of the landing pad stuff is a company called Astrolab. You, maybe you know them with the Flex Rover. So, so we are partnering with them for uh, the, the tool implements that would be attached to that Flex Robot for the construction aspect of it. Now they're also going to be on that mission as well for their demonstration. And we will be on the Flex Rover as a payload on that rover with one of our technologies to demonstrate the ability to, uh, to sieve and filter out the regolith down to the grain sizes we need to have. So we, we do have a reservation right now with, uh, with the Astrolab on the Flex Rover, which is going to be on the Starship, the demonstration mission. Since you would be on that mission, the data that you collect will be very important for your continued development of Absolutely. your programs. Yes, yes. Um, that's the whole goal is to, is to get the data we need to have and, and again, validate the, the technology concept that we're trying, you know, the experiment we're, going to, we're developing. We have a, a, a way to what we call electromagnetic levitation of the regolith, where we can, when the regolith is, uh, is poured, it has a, a tendency to, to cling to the surfaces and to clump up. And we need to be able to have it more flow, flowable into our furnace. So we have a technology that we're developing that sort of separates all the grain by electromagnetic levitation separates them and it makes the flowability easier. And that's what we're going to do the experiment with on that demonstration mission, just to prove that out. Can you tell me about the timelines that you have in mind? Uh, this, this decade will be a decade of demonstrations, uh, demonstration missions. We want to get to the lunar surface by 2027, 2028 timeframe, demonstrate that we can actually put these bricks on the moon, make them on, not actually make the pad, but make a brick to show we can do that. So what we have here is the, the simulant we work with. Uh, there's, we use two kinds. This is called LCATS-1. This is a, a similar to, in composition, mechanically to what you find on the lunar surface. It's a Mari simulant, uh, uh, the, the regolith that's uh, found in the uh, Mari regions, equatorial regions of the moon. We also work with another one called a Highland simulant, which is more of what you find in the, uh, in, the, in the poles of the moon. So there, and there's, there are different compositions, and that's important because when we start making the bricks that we're making here, there are different heat regimes. They, they melt at different temperatures. So we have to make our furnace or melter so it's agnostic to the, no matter what simulant we're putting into it or what regolith is being put into it as well. Now, you see this one here. I'm going to show you the, the difference here. 
feel the weight of this one, if you will. Okay. Versus and the weight of the weight of this one. Okay. Oh, this one's significantly uh, heavier yes. than the other yeah. one. Okay. It's much, much denser, right? Well, the, the difference is that this one has been mixed with a PLA, a, a polymer, so that, so that we can take it and turn it into a filament and 3D print with it. So now the idea is that we not, not only making the bricks, but we're able to 3D print and make fine, fine detail. You can see they've got a honeycomb pattern here. We can print fine detail. Uh, with this uh, PLA mixture of, of simulant. Okay. So, now, is the PLA a product that you're going to have to bring with you, or is that something you can do in yeah, situ? Yeah, in the beginning, you will have to do that. Okay. Now, the, now, the idea is that you know, we'll be able to, way down the road, okay, we're going to have a, you know, a, a, a ability to grow you know, greenhouses, right? You know, grow mm -hmm. food and that kind of stuff. Where, you know, there's going to be a whole, and I'm talking, you know, a couple of decades away, mm -hmm. away here. Uh, where we're actually growing the, the feedstock, the corn, you know, PLA is made out of, out of biomass. Okay. So we'll make, you know, duckweed or corn or whatever that turns into PLA, that turns the PLA into, into the filament. That's a whole supply chain logistics, right? Mm -hmm. That needs to be built up there on the surface. We're a ways, long ways from that, so we've got to bring that PLA with us as well. So one of the, I guess, innovations you're trying to work on is not just making the bricks themselves, but they have a kind of a, a self-sealing me method that doesn't require grout or anything to keep them together. Yes. So can you talk a little bit about that? So, yes, exactly. Um, you can see here the, the, our form shape that we use is this, this hexagon, um, it's a trilobe hexagonal shape that is, it becomes an interlocking brick essentially into this pattern you see here. And the way we, the way we do that when, they, when we put the bricks together, uh, we have a furnace, we have a, actually it's a patented furnace we just got our patent on, where it allows us to place one brick down, this is the size of the brick we're talking about, place it down, and then the next, it goes to the next spot to make, make the next brick, and, and when it's against the wall that's against here, the nozzle lifts up, and it melts together because it's still hot. So now we're melding the, the sides together, and you go to the third brick, and the two walls will lift up, and it, they meld together. So that, so essentially, they're melting together to, to form the, uh, the, the the pavement surface itself. Okay. As well. So the idea is that this would form the surface of which a starship or other lunar lander may land on. Have you done any testing with it to see how does it do with uh, direct uh, rocket? Uh, uh, you know. Yeah, we've we've done a few tests of that for the for the. Uh, we call them ambient bricks because they're made in in, in air here, uh, and we do, we have to get them into the vacuum. And the ones that are in vacuum, you'll see at the lab, are not as dense, not as not as good as the, these ones. Okay. That's our challenge right now. That's what we're working towards, is to move those to. This is our benchmark. Now we got to get to to the ability to do the same sort of density in the vacuum chamber. And there's issues with that here because we have a lot of outgassing that goes on in the vacuum and the cooling rates, that kind of stuff. So those are those are our current. Uh, that's the current state of the art right now in terms of the uh, of making the solidified solidified uh, regular. Okay. Uh, by heating method as well. Well, you mentioned the lab. I'm looking forward to go taking a look. So why don't we head over there? Sure.